welcome back. This is part three of the design mechanism. This particular case, we want to look at a particular example, which is the cosine mechanism. Remembering that the last time we talked about the ways in which enzymes increase the rate of reaction, we talked about acid base catalysis, covalent catalysis, intermediate formation, proximity effect, transition state stabilization. So, what we want to do is to look at these things in action. What we're going to do is look at the enzyme time treatment. Remember, this is the enzyme that feeds on the fossil side of the Aromatic amino acids, tyrosine, and tryptophan, like the OA, and we feed that at the right off. Why are we going to look at this? Well, there's a lot of different mechanisms we could look at, but this is particularly nice because it involves all five of these mechanisms within the same overall mechanism itself. So it makes a good way of looking at it. Plus the fact that there's a series of protein. Enzymes, which are called serial proteases, and these all share the same time mechanism. So we're not just looking at common tryptophan, we're actually looking at other enzymes as well, and examining these particular mechanisms. So what do we know? Well, if we add diacetylpropophosphate, uh, it uh, makes the enzyme active. This molecule was uh, one of the typical kinds of Acids that were used in the warfare during World War II. And so after the war, the entomologists want to find out why it is so effective in terms of unfortunate quantity. What they found is that this molecule is capable of reacting with serine residues on enzymes. However, if you mix this molecule with serine by itself, no reaction. In fact, if you look at chymotrypsin, which is the treated group's molecule, you will see that there's only one series of all the possible series that are reactions. So there has to be something, a special series that involves causing the activity. Then we have paraparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparaparapara
and therefore can become a very powerful nuclear device. Again, this is proposed. The actual structure would indicate that these are not close, but now we're dealing with ways of mechanisms. Mechanisms and enzymes are involved to never be proved. All we can do is disprove. So, until you would knock it down and say, this can't happen, this still is a possibility. Now let's take a look at substrate binding. Okay, in the textbook it shows the sort of valley or crevice into which the R side ring can penetrate. In hydrotrypsin, this is a very hydrophobic and large opening. In trypsin, we go down the bottom, we see a negative charge. Well, now we have to remember the trypsin was positively charged in the elastic. So now we understand why that can occur. In the last stage, on that other hand, it's a very small elastic. So it has a, a pocket that is very, very shallow. So what we can do then is vary the substrate that we're going to uh, react with, simply by preparing the substrate binding, and still maintain the same mechanism. That's why I'm looking at it. So we have three different enzymes, all sharing the same kind of chemistry that's going on. So let's take a look at that chemistry. 